So a codename one application has a main class which has lifecycle methods. We will create a simple application that doesn't use the GUI builder and we'll use uh, the web service wizard to create a relatively simple web service uh, for the application. Uh, in the generated main class, we will write all of the code of this specific application because it's a relatively simple application that doesn't include too much functionality. So this is all mostly done for simplicity. Naturally, a real life application would have more elaborate structures within it. And you can look at our docs and demos for samples of more elaborate applications and ideally GUI build applications. Now, I won't get too much into the theme res file and the font we use here and everything. Uh, there's two files that you can just take uh, and use them as is. Uh, but I will show you some things uh, related to that later on. So let's start by ac actually analyzing what the web service does. Codename One has a simple web service tool that's very reminiscent of uh, the GWT's approach to web services, which is really uh, the RPC concept, where we generate uh, the client code, uh, sort of stubs where you can feel like you're invoking a method locally, but it goes to the server and we generate server code for you as well. And that code can be invoked sort of seamlessly. The whole servlet portion and the whole uh, web invocation uh, and threading is all handled seamlessly. Uh, we differ from GWT or similar tools like that in two major ways. Uh, one, we have both an asynchronous and a synchronous call. And we can do that thanks to the EDT, which I'll discuss later on. So when you're invoking a web service in codename one, you can call it synchronously and then it just feels like a method call that just takes a while to perform because it needs to go all the way to the server. Or you can do it asynchronously, in which case the method returns immediately and you get an additional callback sort of signature on the method itself. And that's very useful. So I'll show this to you in code just now. So here we are in NetBeans, and in order to open the web service wizard, I can just right click and uh, select the web service wizard. And this essentially launches uh, this relatively uh, simple tool. Mm -hmm. It remembers my existing settings uh, in the project, uh, but naturally if you do this from scratch, you will need to uh, start by adding things and I can just add a method and define the method name, define the return type, add arguments of various return types. You will notice that most of the arguments are sort of basic, arrays, strings, stuff like that. You can also pass an externalizable object which is a bit more complex, but generally we recommend passing relatively simple information to the web service to avoid uh, complexity, but you can pass many arguments without a problem. And as you can see, these are the methods that we defined. If we'll look at the class web service proxy, this is the actual implementation of the web service. And here it is, it's entirely a generated file with the exception of this line, which I've edited to point, which I've edited to point at uh, the correct server URL from uh, the main class that we have. And by the way, earlier I discussed this is the main class. This is the photo share class. And uh, the rest here is just invocations. As you can see, these are the methods I defined in the wizard. And this is their, this is their entire implementation. As you can see, every method has two versions, uh, an async version and a sync version. The sync version will throw an exception in case of the web service failing on the server. And the async version will uh, invoke a callback with the appropriate uh, error message or no error message uh, as is necessary. And that's uh, pretty useful. So that's web service. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you was the new project wizard. When you create a new codename one project, and I can select it right here, 
we enter the name of the project followed uh, by the package name. Now this is really important because package names are hard to change later on and that's how App Store is defining your, pack, your application. Now in this particular case we created the simple native themed application with a manual coding. This is a GUI builder application with a visual uh, option. This is the manual version. If you're using IDEA or um, or Eclipse, the UI might be slightly different, but it's the same basic concept. And that's how this project was essentially created. So let's go back to the presentation and continue from there. So let's proceed to the actual code. And it's easier sometimes to review the code in the presentation because it's uh, more isolated. This is essentially the proxy that's generated on the server. Now, I'm not going to go into the server implementation at all. Actually, I'm going to leave it exactly as it is here. Now, this file is generated. I just added a few things like the image file class and things like that. You can just download the code that comes with, uh, with this uh, workshop and uh, go over it. Uh, it's just essentially a stub. This is the server side code and it's just invoked by the servlet that we generate for you seamlessly. So that's really convenient. It's uh, a relatively dummy implementation. Now this is the actual code that uh, we have on the client side. So as you can see the code here is relatively simple. We have a variable initialization at the top where we define the server URL that we're, work, we're working with. I have uh, commented out code for the local host version where we debugged uh, the code here. And the URLs for various things like fetching the images, fetching thumbnail images, and things like that. Notice the init method uh, right at the top here. That's an interesting method. It's called initially when the app is started for the first time or the first time after it was killed or exited and it allows you to initialize things like the theme and here the theme theme.res file which we saw in the project is uh, loaded into memory and the theme contains the actual look of the application everything that's in it uh, the look and feel uh, constants various things like that and every codeaim one application has a theme uh, if only to derive from the native theme, even if you don't do anything there, it's you need it. And uh, as you can see, we load uh, the thumbnail PNG image, which is a placeholder image that we'll use later to show something while uh, the actual image is, act is loaded or fetched from the web. Uh, we also need to set the URL for the thumbnails, uh, as you can see right below that in the init method. And the reason we need to do that here is that we need the width and the height of the placeholder to be identical. Now you might be thinking, uh, won't it always be the same after all I'm loading the exact same placeholder image? Well, no. You see the placeholder image is a multi-image which means uh, we will get a different uh, image based on the resolution of the device. And so this placeholder image uh, will be at a different resolution depending of the, on the density on the DPI of the device. So if you're running on a really low resolution device uh, or really low density device, we'll get a different image than if we'd run on a very high density device. And this allows the image to look decent even in high resolution devices. Uh, next, you will see the start method, which is interesting. It's essentially uh, invoked every time the application is launched or restarted. So that means if I open the application, then go back to the home form, then return to the application, then start will be invoked, but in it will not because the application is already initialized. So it's sort of useful to debug things like pause resume, like if you get a phone call in the middle of the application, that's interesting. So as you can see, we have two major methods here, the show main form, which shows the actual main form of the application, and show login form. And we'll go into both of these methods uh, as we move forward, starting with the login form. Now, this is the first point where we run into actual codename one user interface code. 
this is the login form, the first form we see when we sign up to, to run the application. And the login process is relatively simple. We are presented with uh, a request to give our email and our name. And then when we press sign up with the sign up button, we are supposed to be sent an email. This is sort of a stub in the, in the server code, but the server should send that email. And then when we receive that email, it should contain a code which we can input in, and that will essentially create uh, the activation. So this portion is actually just the user interface. And as you can see, it's based on a form, and the form has a title called Login. Uh, it uses a border layout. If you're uh, an AWT or Swing developer, you should be very familiar with that. But we added an enhancement to this border layout where we allow the center of the border layout to be actually in the center and not scale. So we've enabled that here. And then we can just place the component group in the center. As you can see in the component group, we add the various components in and the component group essentially allows components to be grouped nicely on iOS devices. And we added uh, three components, an email, a display name, and uh, the button to send the actual verification email. And as you can see below that, we have an action listener where we bind the events. Uh, action listener will be invoked when a user clicks the button. We can bind action listeners to text fields, buttons, radio buttons, etc. And now we just apply the layout, uh, nest the components one into another, and create the form and show it, which will produce this result. The phone will essentially have this login title. And uh, as you can see, the components are grouped together in a component group. They're sort of a single piece rather than separate components. That's a behavior that's specific to iPhone. If you'll run it on a, an Android device, this will look different. So the second portion of the lo login process is very interesting. We essentially send a request to the server. So as you can see, we're uh, actually invoking a web service right here. Uh, where we essentially invoke on the web service uh, proxy method the create account call and we give it the email address that we have form called verify account and that form essentially allows us to input a single the number that we get back from uh, from the server and that number or key uh, allows us to um, uh, essentially activate the application. So the method in uh, the web service proxy returns the key value. And if the user inputs the same value from the email, then we can log in the user and that's it. Once we log him in and once we mark him as logged in, that's it. There's no need uh, for any passwords or usernames or anything like that. And that's really, really convenient on uh, mobile where you don't really want to input uh, passwords and things like that, but you always have your email right there ready for you. So it's a much easier login process. Uh, we might have even used a QR code reader, which we have built into Codename One, but I thought that would be a bit too complicated uh, for this particular case. Now you'll notice that persistent data is stored using the preferences uh, class, which is really easy to store data. There's lots of ways to store data in codename one from SQL to storage to file system, etc. Uh, I won't get into all of these. This is one of the simplest ones. Uh, we set the back command, which sort of in iOS it fits in the top left corner, but in other devices uh, it will be mapped to the back button, the physical back button. And here's the interesting part, the dialog. You will notice that we have in the exception section a dialog message where we show an error dialog and give the option to retry or exit. You'll notice that we're blocking uh, the event dispatch thread with the dialog and the dialog will actually return a result. Now this is very interesting and this will lead us to the next section where we will talk about the event dispatch thread uh, in a small detail.